Hello, sir. Hey, how you doing? Good, thanks. How are you today? I'm pretty good. You know, this series, it was amazing. It, it, it was one of the most powerful journeys. You know, working through this series with Sam Elliott, what was it like for you? What was he like as a scene partner and, you know, going through this whole journey? It, man, Sam is uh, like, I can't, there's not enough words to describe, but knowing that you're about to work with a Hollywood icon, you get those nerves and those, you know, that those butterflies like, okay, you know, I got to bring it. And when I first met him, it was on the gun range during cowboy camp and he came over and embraced me and all the nerves that I had going into it, like I they were left right there on the grass in that field. And we were inseparable in front of the camera and we were inseparable behind the camera um, for the, for the duration. And even still, like I, we, we still talk and hang out long after we wrapped up and, and, and moved on. So it's, yeah, it's a brotherhood from here on out. That's amazing. I mean, the amount of scenes you shared together, the amount you must have worked together on set, I, I can only imagine it's, it's quite a bonding, bonding time. Yeah. Uh, the other side of this is, you know, as a viewer, I'm watching this and it looks so authentic. It looks so good. As an actor stepping into this, did you have pinch me moments with the set? Does it did it feel like you were transported in time or what was that like? Taylor did a great job with that. And these ranches, like every couple of weeks, we would pick up and move to a different location, whether it's Texas or Montana or Oregon. Uh, but these locations, we didn't have cell phone service, really. We didn't have cable TV. Like we didn't have a lot of the rooms. And, you know, we weren't staying in these five star hotels. We were staying on ranches. So there weren't even TVs around without cable that you could watch Netflix on or anything like we were just we were in it. and. Um, yeah, that was, you know, it's hard not to feel a part of it. You know, when you're on these ranches, you're waking up hearing horses communicate right outside your window every morning. And then, you know, you get on your horse. We work six days a week, so we didn't really have a lot of days off. The moment I knew that, I knew it was special from reading the scripts and all the people that were going to be a part of it. But there was an episode, I think it was the first episode we were shooting, me and Sam were sitting on our horses and we were looking at, the 26 wagon train that was right in front of us. And Sam said, he's never seen this in his career and he probably, we never will again. And this guy has been acting longer than I've been on this earth. And for him to say that, it really set the tone and the magnitude of how big this, this thing is gonna be. And um, yeah, I just, I didn't have to remind myself. I saw it every day, how huge it was. But hearing him say that, it really it set the tone for the whole shoot. Well, Thomas has such a, a great sense of responsibility, I guess you could say. And uh, his his whole the way you portray him is such a, a wonderful, you know, glimpse into what this era might have been like for this kind of person. How did you envision him? Did you did it jump off the script for you, you know, kind of his bearing and everything else? Or how did you discover the character? Reading the scripts, Taylor wrote a lot down of, um, of, of who Thomas was. And me and Taylor talked about it during the audition process. And it was one of those roles where, to me, it was a once-in-a-lifetime role. Like, I've never seen a Black cowboy like this, and especially in television westerns. Uh, and I knew that I just had to stick to landing because everything else was, was, was there for you. It was all on the page. And I just knew I had, you know, I had to do my research and I had to um, bring him to life in the right way. And I got with my dialect coach. I did a lot of research. I studied. I, you know, and the way I wanted to portray him that was written on the page. But even just this, the way he carried himself with this, this quiet dignity, I wanted to make sure that came across on, on, on film, on uh, screen. And, you know, I think I think we did that. You did an incredible job. I mean, this this cast, this team, this story, it's it's mind blowing. And I mean, at the same time, there's so many highs and lows. It's such an intense story. Uh, and I know you've talked at length about one of the worst things you had to film, which which was so visceral. Uh, on the other hand, what was what was some of the better light moments? Were there moments on set that felt like I can't believe I got to do this? <laughs> I think just. Uh... 
when you're riding around as a kid, you you know, you think about one day I'm gonna be in a western. You know, you you cops and robbers, you know, bandits and whatever, riding on horses, like the reins in one hand, the gun in the other hand, and you're chasing bandits. You know, there's no good bandits that that rob the wagon train. We're going to get them. And you're physically as fast as the horse can ride. It's exhilarating because you just learned how to ride a horse months ago. And you're getting after it and you're shooting. Like it was that, you know, it doesn't get any more special than that. Like you're a big kid. And getting to do those kind of scenes were, um, it was special. I mean, there's so much action right from the beginning. Did you do a lot of your own action or at least some of it? Or how did that work? I did a good chunk. In the beginning, I... I was still trying to get comfortable with, with horseback riding and my double aura or Brown, he's a great cowboy from, uh, from, from Oklahoma. He did a good chunk. And then as time went on, I was much more comfortable. So when we really got into the meat of some of these big action scenes from the middle moving on, I was doing most of that, mm -hmm. but still, if it was something that was too much or, you know, I, I'll call, I'll hit him up like, Hey man, this, this has got your name written all over it. Like, I wasn't afraid to, to have him jump on this horse. But I, I did a good chunk. Well, in the end, he makes you look good because the audience doesn't know. We're watching this guy. Oh, man, he's amazing. <laughs> yeah. No, Aura, like I said, anytime I got to do some stuff with horses, Aura's my guy. He's, he's, he's a hell of a cowboy. Well, the other side of this is that in the end, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything for the people who haven't watched it yet, but, like, Thomas has – an awesome ending in this story like his story is is very uplifting uh what's it like being part of one of the the happy endings in the story <laughs> i didn't see that coming especially like i'm reading the scripts and my manager and my agent had the scripts they were a couple of scripts ahead of me while we were reading it we're all reading it together and they would call me crying after reading each one like oh my i'm like how'd i get it How'd I die? You know, like I'm just I'm just sitting around waiting for the other shoe to drop when I'm reading these scripts. And I'm like, wait a minute, Thomas. So he he gets the girl. Wow. And he has a happy like, really, I didn't see that coming. And it's refreshing because I've been a part of a handful of shows where I'm it's not how I die. It's when, you know, so it's uh, it was nice to have the happy ending once. You know, hopefully that continues. But, you know, we'll we'll see. Well, the last thing I'm going to ask you, I don't know if you can answer this, but are we going to see Thomas again? Uh, not that I know of at, at this point. Uh, hopefully. That's a missed opportunity. That has to change. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, you know, we get some, uh, like Paramount Plus get some hashtags. T Thomas, I'm knowing me. We need to see their story. Uh, prequels, something. I don't know. But I, if, if Paramount Plus called me up for that, I'd be all on board. Well, it is very cool to hear that there's going to be, you know, two kind of sequels, if you want to call them sequels to, to this. So maybe hopefully we'll cross our fingers and something will happen then. Yeah, maybe, you know, the world exists where Thomas shows up on 1883 Bass Reeves and hey, Bass, I'm sure they've crossed paths at some point in the 1800s. It wouldn't be too far fetched. So a little you know, cameo at least, right? So yeah, something just a little what right by tip of the hat and keep going. I don't know something. <laughs> That would be cool. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for the time. It really was a pleasure chatting. Thanks for having me.